Hey guys and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review. Today's game up on the tabletop is Next Station Tokyo by Blue Orange Games. This is a one to four player game that takes roughly about 25 minutes to play and it's for ages eight and up. And in the game Next Station Tokyo, you are playing a flip and write. It's similar to a roll and write, but in this case, you're gonna get a small deck of cards, flipping them over and then taking drawing actions on your tablet or piece of paper here. And basically you're going to be creating metro stations along Tokyo. As the cards flip over, eventually when a certain number have been flipped, that will end the round. In which case you're gonna to transfer to different colored pencils. In the game, you're going to be getting basically the rules on a bunch of, bunch of different languages here. Uh, it's like an accordion style rule book, as well as four colored pencils, which are what you're gonna be using during the four different rounds of the game. Uh, you're also going to be getting a set of cards. These cards are what you use to do the railways. Uh, these guys here are different objective cards, some that you can use in the advanced mode of the game. And then of course, the most important part of the game, which is going to be this big tablet or this big uh, pad of paper that has both front and back with different areas along the area of Tokyo. Uh, and that's basically what you're going to be doing, flipping these cards over, drawing down lines, connecting different ra railway stations, as well as scoring points and gathering tickets along the way. Will you be the one to score the most points after four rounds of connecting the dots? Find out in the game next Station Tokyo by Blue Orange. To set up the game, Next Station Tokyo, the first thing you'll do is you'll give each player a pad of paper. Then you're going to be giving each player a pencil. In a four player game, each player will get one pencil. In a three player game, everyone will get one and there'll be one left out on the left hand side of the farthest left hand side player and so on and so forth up until just one player exists. You're going to go ahead and take this deck of cards here. This deck of cards is going to be uh, your flip and write cards basically. They're going to have two different types of cards. They're going to be a yellow and, or sorry, this is going to be pink and blue and this is going to be green and yellow. Go ahead and just shuffle these guys up and place this somewhere within reach of the starting player or the conductor. And then you can go ahead and set aside all the rest of the stuff. There are some shared objectives that you could add to the game to increase the complexity of it, um, as well as some special stations uh, that you can add to the game, as well as some other cards. But for the most part, this is all you need for setting up for the base game of Next Station Tokyo. Okay, now rule time. There are four rounds of play in the game. During a round of play, one player is going to be the conductor and he or she is going to be taking a card from the top of this purple set of cards here and flipping it face up. And that is going to tell you uh, from which station you are going to need to connect to. Now when you start the game, you're going to have a certain colored pencil. So if I have a purple pencil, I'm going to go ahead and look at my piece of paper and see the purple space on the paper. From there, I can look at the card that has been flipped over and I will create a line from my station to that card's station. So in this case, it is a pentagon. So I will go from my square to a pentagon. I have to make a straight line. And everyone else will do the same with their specific starting station and their colored pencil. And then you'll simply go ahead and flip over another card. Normally, most cards are gonna have stations on them. Some cards are gonna be wilds that also allow you to kind of make a double line, which is allowing you to make another uh, uh, colored pencil connected from like one location to another. So if you already have like a blue station going from like a circle to like a triangle and you're on the circle space and you want to go to the triangle again, you have to have this double card. And there's one or two in the deck that you could possibly get. And you're just gonna go ahead and do that. The next card here again, you'll flip over a card and you will see okay now it's a circle wherever you're at you'll have to draw a line to the next circle station now there are rules as to what you can do and what you can't do in the game you're never allowed to uh, continuously make a line from one point to another that already has a line there unless you have a double station you're never allowed to go through an already made line in the game so you're always going to have to want to connect from station to station avoiding other people's other lines of other stations that you've made beforehand um, and you also want to take note that there are different districts in the area. You're going to have the central area, and these are defined by yellow lines, uh, that are going to connect to certain locations. And at the end of the game, you'll score points based on if you can get to certain locations as well. Your main objective in the game, as these cards get flipped over, is to try and visit all the different areas and to score as many points possible. There's a variety of ways to score points in this game. The first main way is creating stations. Each round you're going to score points based on these stations that you're creating. The, the first one here is the, 
<laughs> purple one, um, and you would do the purple scoring. And then on the next round, once you pass your pencil to the to the left and you get somebody else's pencil uh, then you'll score for the next round and then the next round and the next round till all of your different types of lines have been drawn uh, lines are scored by having the um, biggest area times the number of, of, of districts and you'll do that all the way across for each one of these guys here. You're also going to have these stamps here that you can achieve or collect. If you're able to get into each of the different little districts, you can score a five or up to 10 points. And there's a total of about 60 points that you can get that way. Um, and then there's other ways you can score points like connecting, making intersections. So intersecting with one area that you already have to another area you already have. And if you can get a set of three, four, or even five, you can score between five, 10, and 30 points for each one that you do. Now you also score negative points for each green area on the main central line that's always going to be there in Tokyo. For each one of these stations that you do not connect to, in, in at least one of the four rounds of play, you'll lose three points. And then on the very far right hand side here, these are additional scoring points for additional advanced modes of play. But that's basically the idea of the game. On, a, on, your on the first round, you'll flip them over a card, draw a line, flip over a card, draw a line. You'll keep doing that until you see one, two, three, four, and five green and yellow cards. As soon as this happens, you've basically drawn one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine different lines here. You're then going to take this deck, you're going to shuffle it up once again, you're going to pass this deck over to the person who you're passing your pencil over to and everybody's going to pass their pencils and you're going to start at the new starting location and continue. It is a roll and write, but you're just flipping over cards. You are creating lines. There are certain rules on how you can make your lines and you're just trying to do the objectives as you see them. And each of these are pretty straightforward. They're explained in detail as to how you're scoring and where you can go ahead and draw your lines on the specific area here. But that is the basic game for next day. Station Tokyo. Okay? Review time. So next station Tokyo is basically a roll and write utilizing cards. They can end at any point in time based on the rules, which states that you're just going to need to have five of these green cards pop out. And when that happens, the round will end and everybody will pass. And you'll do that four times. In the deck of cards, there are two things that happen uh, that are unique. One of which is going to be the wild, where you can go anywhere and you can also make a double line. And then the other one here is a railway station. I'll drop one of these guys out. Then you'll flip over another one. And as opposed to following the normal rules of play, which is you connect one line to the next, to the next, to the next, this will let you kind of uh, uh, divert into a different path as opposed to continuing the, uh, the same path. So there are some cards that do some unique um, rule changes that allow you to kind of mix it up and match it up. Uh, the main way of scoring points in this game is uh, the lines that you're drawing, the four different like stations that you're going to go through. Uh, you're basically going to score points, like I said, for each district you go through times the one district that you have the most stations in. So if you go through five, sta five different districts and one of the districts you go through has five different stations that you've hit, then that's uh, five times five, which is 25 points. And you're trying to score high points that way. Uh, but you also don't want to forget to visit the different areas, the different little locations in the area. So it will score you even more points. And you also don't want to forget intersections. Having a specific station branch out in many different pathways is not only good for the community in Tokyo to be able to get to where they want in a single station, but it's also good for you because you score a boatload of points. And you want to make sure that each of the main districts, uh, um, each of the main stations in the central district has at least one connecting station. So that way you do not lose three points at the end of the game. And involving and including the advanced version of the game is also a nice little addition to scoring even more possible points and making some unique changes to the game as well. This is a fun game. I actually haven't played a game where you're fl I've been flipping over cards and then creating lines that go from one different area to another. Uh, this one feels like you have to kind of set up and plan for each of the different types of colored stations that you're creating. You have to make sure that you do not box yourself in too early, and by that you'll have to try and plan your route as best as you possibly can. Sometimes you won't have as much of a choice because maybe the card that is drawn is not going to be as favorable to you, but most likely you're always 
always going to have at least a different diversion of spaces that you can go in between during the different rounds of play. And because everybody gets the same cards, but for the different colored stations, you're going to have a different board every single time you play, and the different combinations of cards that you can get is going to change that style as well. Being able to divert and create a path, the game feels really nice. It feels like you are going and creating little different metro stations and districts in Tokyo where you're going around trying to connect everything to make it nice and easy. And then the stamps add this little flavor of you have to try and score additional points by getting outside of the main district. Nobody cares about being in the middle of Tokyo. Everybody's been there. It's about going into the different areas, the suburban areas that you might not have seen before to collect those stamps and score you additional points. Creating those different little stations that give you multiple intersections is going to be a nice way of bonusing and multiplying those points as well. And then, of course, making sure that every main station has a connection because, I mean, it would feel pretty weird for a main station in Tokyo to only go to one or two different locations. Overall, this is a fun game. This is a straightforward type of roll and write slash draw and write game from Blue Orange Games. It gives you a ton of paper and they're both front and back. And it, what it looks like is that every single one is pretty much exactly the same. It's the same style, so each game is played in the same fashion, but you're choosing different colors at different times, and that's what makes it unique. If you want to add additional uh, expandable content, you can pull out the, the accordion rulebook here, which will show you advanced modules, which is gonna show you how to do your shared objectives. It'll show you your special stations and the different colored cards involved with that. And it'll also have a solo mode. In the very end here, I'll show you the setup and how to play the solo mode, and of course, what you score will determine how well you did, of course, like most solo games. The one, I guess, main native is having to go through this rule book here. This is, I wish it was kind of more of a booklet as opposed to this and this. That was kind of like frustrating, but uh, the game itself is fine. It's pretty simple, pretty straightforward, really, even though all the rules, be, I, they need all those rules because they need to make sure that you follow the guidelines of how to make lines. And I didn't explain everything in the game as far as like the exact, you can't do this and you can do this and you can't do this, but I made sure you got the basic ideas. You can't cross your lines. You can't uh, go on the same areas unless you have specific cards that say so. Um, but yeah, there's a lot of rules as to what you can and cannot do in the game. Which, if you, as you learn them, they're pretty straightforward and like kind of common sense in, in, in most cases here. But other than just the rules and having to get through that, the game itself is a lot of fun. This is an easy replayable game. This is a great solo game as well. And my wife really enjoys this game. Now, I'm not a super big fan of solo player games. So this is a game I would preferably like to play with multiple people even though my play doesn't affect your play. It's kind of got more of a solitaire style to it, and you check to see how well you've done based on what you had to work with comparatively to your opponents. Overall, Next Station Tokyo is a fun little draw and write game, and if you want to check it out, there's a link down below in the description. Thank you guys for watching another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for, like I said, Next Station Tokyo. Link in the description. You can also go ahead and check out unfilteredgamer.com, blog posts, giveaways, Kickstarter lists, and more. We do a live stream every Wednesday and whatnot, where we sell games, show off games, play games, and of course on Sunday, 6.30 p.m. PST, on Twitch, Facebook, and YouTube, simulcast. So you can go ahead and watch us anywhere there that you'd like. We play games just like this one here. All right, guys, if you think that we have earned your subscription, if this is more than the first video or the second video, or if this is maybe your third video, then maybe consider hitting that subscribe button. We do greatly appreciate it. Thank you so much. And as always, I look forward to visiting the next station in Tokyo with you next time.